Good day, everyone. I'm Tatiana Thompson, and this is Bromberg News. Well, it's really nice to have hummingbirds back. The only problem here in the east is that we get only one species of hummingbird, the ruby throats, and they are so territorial. I've already seen them fighting over one feeder. So as soon as I see that, I put up the rest of my hummingbird feeders. I actually like to have one sort of on each corner of my house and several of them I actually put together. Like this type of hummingbird feeders I put together. Uh, larger birds like chickadees and woodpeckers also come to this type of feeders. Uh, the glass feeder, the prettier one, I like to put somewhere where I spend a lot of time and that's kitchen for me. Also, I reserve a glass feeder for spots that get the most sun, which also happens in front of my uh, kitchen uh, window. The saucer feeder, uh, I like to put right on the window. I have a suction cup that I put on the window put this one because I find that it doesn't get banged around as much when birds land on it so it doesn't make as much noise and then oriole feeder I was trying to attract orioles and that didn't really happen but hummingbirds and larger birds again like chickadees and woodpeckers also enjoy this feeder so I'll just leave it out for whichever birds to come and feed at. Uh, you probably noticed that I don't have my feeders filled up all the way this is actually on purpose because that way it forces me to change nectar more often and that doesn't allow nectar to spoil as often. So let's go put them up. Hi David, it looks like a nice day out there. Here's what we have for you from John Petrus. The attached photo is the remnants of a very large pine tree that has been gradually decaying for several years, but starting this spring something has been tearing it apart. I thought it may be a skunk or raccoon looking for ants and termites, but according to my landscaper, it's a woodpecker based upon the holes and the way it's torn apart. During the winter, I had as regular visitors to my winter feeding station a downy woodpecker and what I believe a red-bellied woodpecker. The red belly continues to visit my window feeder that I maintain year-round. Do you agree this is the result of a woodpecker and isn't unusual? Since this stump is in the extreme corner of my property, there is very little threat to my home and the landscaper said to just enjoy nature's cycle. Unfortunately, I haven't actually seen a woodpecker, but I wasn't looking. I am now. Hi, John. I'm glad to hear you share my love for woodpeckers and that you're seeing them regularly at your feeders. If I had not studied birds of prey for four decades, those wood drillers would have certainly been my second choice. I took a look at your picture of the large decayed pine tree and your landscaper's correct. However, I'm convinced that it's a pileated woodpecker that's tearing it apart. It's not likely to be the work of the smaller woodpeckers like downies, harries, or red-bellies. They usually move their way up a trunk staying well out of reach of ground predators. In fact, I've seen a tree in a very similar state on a golf course once and I watched two pileated woodpeckers going to work on it. Normally, if these large birds are creating holes in the trunks of trees, they're a vertical, rectangular shape. I'm also happy to hear that you're of a mind to leave the decayed tree alone, and I hope you get to see those crow-sized woodpeckers feeding on it soon. Despite being one of the most common of the owls, the barn owl is in decline in certain areas and this is primarily because of rodent poison. An adult barn owl will eat over 2,000 rodents a year. That's almost six rodents a day. But if that rodent is carrying some sort of poison in its system, then that will be definitely passed on to a barn owl. One of the areas where barn owls are seriously affected by this is Warrington 
Missouri. Since 1981, the World Bird Sanctuary, based in Warrington, has been trying to breed barn owls in captivity. And last Wednesday, they released barn owl number 1,000 into the wild. The sanctuary's mission is to educate people about the dangers of using rodent poison. And with barn owls eating so many rodents a day, why not just try and attract more of them? For the past 30 years, scientists have been collecting data on the red knot, a bird that breeds in the Arctic and then flies south for 9,300 miles, which is the longest migration path of any bird. What scientists are discovering is that the red knot is shrinking in size. Literally, it's actually 15% smaller than it was 30 years ago. During nesting season, red knots feed on Arctic insects that hatch at a very specific time of the year. But because of global warming, these bugs are now hatching a lot earlier before red knots have returned from the south. And also because the bird is much smaller in size, it's having a hard time digging down and finding its winter food source, bugs and crustaceans buried in the sand. It must be really frustrating not being able to get to your food source no matter where you go. For the time being, the red knot is considered at least concerned and scientists are really hoping that the bird will be able to adjust to all the changes in the environment. Meet the grasshopper sparrow. It's about five inches long and it lives in grasslands and plains in southern Florida and it's one of the most endangered bird species in North America. With only about 150 birds left in the wild, biologists were predicting that this bird would go extinct in the next three to five years. Researchers and scientists have been trying to figure out why this bird is in such rapid decline and one of the theories is climate change. Every spring, severe rains and flooding wipe out nests and eggs, leaving fewer and fewer birds to reproduce every year. A captive breeding program was launched in 2013, but it's only this year that biologists working closely with the Department of Fish and Wildlife were successful at hatching newborn sparrows in captivity. There are no plans to release the birds into the wild yet. Officials want to build up the population of the grasshopper sparrow to make sure that this bird doesn't go extinct. This season for big birding festivals is slowing down for the summer, but it doesn't mean you can't go birding or bird watching anymore. Look for your local initiatives. There are always all sorts of activities being organized by bird lovers. I, for example, have just joined our local group. It's called Bird Protection Quebec, and they have something planned almost every week. I will take you on a tour to one of their sites this summer. What I love about your pictures is that as the seasons change, so does the subject matter. I learn from your pictures, I get inspired by them. It's just always fun. And so let's have a look at the top five this week. And even though the winter is long gone and we're all enjoying this nice warm weather, we picked this picture as the winner this week. And so we're sending this feeder, Squirrel Solution 200, to S. Andager in New Hampshire. Congratulations. Keep them coming. Photos at brombirdcare.com. And this is it for this week. Uh, enjoy the sunshine, plant native trees and flowers, and have fun.